Hey, welcome, everybody. Um, we're very happy to have today as our speaker, Yi Yin, from Institute of Modern Physics uh, of Chinese Academy of Sciences. And uh, he's going to tell us about coagulant plasma, the QCD critical point, and hydroplast. I just want to remind everybody that this is a seminar uh, which we want to be as uh, informal as possible with lots of questions, discussions, and uh, stimulating thoughts. So please uh, interrupt the speaker uh, when you have a question and uh, let's uh, take it away. Okay, uh, so thank you so much for the introduction. And it's uh, really my great pleasure to give these uh, presentations in this very uh, nice seminar uh, series. So I will talk about uh, the QCD critical point search. I will talk about uh, uh, hydroplast, which I will explain immediately. And uh, I will talk about a little bit more on the quark-gram plasma, um, so, uh, quark plasma uh, uh, some properties of quark-gram plasmas. So, uh, so man, uh, some of the work re uh, reported here is uh, supported by the uh, best collaboration, uh, the best uh, BMAN, so best, uh, uh, best stands for BMAN just can theory collaboration. And uh, well, uh, uh, and also uh, during my, uh, uh, during my time at MIT as a postdoc, but now I'm uh, in the Institute of Modern Physics and Chinese Academy. So this is our planned new uh, campus where we wish also to build some fixed target program, uh, fixed target heavy on collision and um, progress. Maybe I will explain it a little bit. So um, as, uh, as, uh, as Michael said, this, uh, um, I'm really looking forward to the questions because for giving me a seminar like this, I really don't, uh, uh, don't know to what extent you, uh, you uh, I mean, the, I, can, uh, I don't have a good sense about the background of the audience. So it will be the best thing that uh, uh, can happen is uh, you can ask the um, questions and also for this purpose you can see I, I, I also try to write some uh, things on these uh, slides so that we can do and uh, explain by the equations. Uh, okay, so this is the uh, outline of my talk. So, uh, so the main focus of my talk is about the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the understanding of the fluctuating fluctuation dynamics because this is crucial for the uh, search for the QCD critical point. So for this purpose, what we do is I will uh, tell you the construction of a new uh, dynamical framework, uh, which, I show, uh, which is uh, uh, called the by the hydro plus, by plus we mean that we are coupling the hydrodynamics with the long wavelength critical fluctuations because those long wavelength um, critical fluctuations becomes more and more important as you are uh, approaching the critical point. But in fact, it will be very useful is actually you can, uh, you, you, you first ask yourself a question, a more general question, which is how to couple uh, how to couple parametrically slow modes with the hydrodynamics modes. So, uh, so, so key, some, uh, key concept introduced here is the parametrically slow mode, and I, I will explain what do I uh, mean by that. So, uh, if time per, um, permitted, I will wish, I wish to tell and uh, share you about something uh, I've recently get very interesting, namely how to uh, let me try to probe in the non-hydrodynamic yet strongly coupled region of the QGP. And there are many good reasons that we believe there's a such region for the QGPs, but uh, our knowledge about it is very uh, uh, limited. So I want to share you some uh, pieces of information I get by starting the uh, effective theory of the fluctuating hydro as well as considering the uh, physics of the jet, uh, jet uh, media interaction in order to, uh, to, to understand a little bit better on, on, on this, this region of the QG. But still, I think this is uh, still one of the main unknowns about the, uh, the uh, quark gluon plasmas. Okay, so, uh, so, so in fact, the, the focus of this talk is on the uh, critical dynamics. And uh, so uh, this is the field which undergoes very rapid development in the uh, past uh, uh, few years. So, um, so and, um, and I learned these topics through the collaborations, with, through the collaborations uh, as a number of the uh, people listed here. 
And so let me begin just to uh, remind ourselves in, so what is really QCD, uh, the QCD phase diagram is about. I think one way to think about it is the QCD phase diagram is the phase diagram about the uh, phases of matters and the extreme uh, under the extreme conditions because uh, because if you put the system in the extremely high temperature, for example, eventually you need to understand the eventually the system microscopically. Uh, oops, sorry, uh, eventually the system is governed by the um, uh, you get governed by the physics of the QCD. So for that reasons, you can think about the uh, phase diagram QCD is also the phase diagram of matter under extremely um, conditions. So, uh, so Barry, so this is the handwritten notes um, um, by, um, by Fermi, where he, he's asking the questions, the matter in the unusual uh, conditions, and he also sketch out uh, the, uh, the phase diagram in his mind. And um, so let me uh, quickly move forward to the, uh, I mean, moving forward and, uh, uh, and come to today. So, uh, so here, I, what I illustrated is today's sketch of the QCD uh, phase diagram. So y-axis here is the temperature, while x-axis here, uh, uh, well, here, uh, here is the barrier and chemical potentials. So, um, yes, if you have questions, please ask, but I would like, to, but, uh, uh, if I want to make a very long story short, I would say that if you go to the uh, very small barrier, uh, I mean small barium chemical region, say barium chemical potential is smaller than 200 MeV, uh, I would say that in the, uh, so, or roughly corresponding to um, this region of the phase diagram, I think we, uh, we made the significant advances. And for example, we know that the uh, quark ground plasma phase uh, in this region, uh, quark gluon plasma in this region behaves as, uh, as a liquid with an extraordinary small specific uh, uh, viscosities, and also this is the region that the lattice can make. Uh, uh, that uh, the first principle uh, lattice calculation is uh, applicable. Then the natural question is, what happens if we are increasing the um, baryon chemical potentials? So. Um, so, uh, so then the story here is uh, becomes more interesting in the sense that actually uh, our knowledge is limited uh, uh, in in uh, in this uh, uh, intermediate baryon chemical potential or baryon uh, rich regions. So for that reason, so I, I I think this is the region we can say this is like the unexplored the landscapes. You can ask questions. What happens if you are um, uh, what happens? Uh, uh, if you just uh, add some more and more uh, quarks into the quark gluon plasma, whether this quark gluon plasma still behaves uh, as a liquid, and uh, just uh, as a, uh, as a examples. And so today, what I'm talking about, I will talk about is the um, critical point. So, uh, so this is the phase, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so this is the phase diagram of the water. And so on the left is the phase diagram of the water, and this is the uh, critical point of the water. So uh, what I want to uh, demonstrate here is the, um, the, the process of the critical point is the, the ubiquitous uh, phenomenon. So then it's uh, very nature to ask why, the, we, uh, we, uh, why the there's a critical point in the phase diagram of the um, QCDs. So um, on the one hand, we know from the first principle uh, lattice calculation, as I just mentioned, that the transition from the hydrogen gas to the quark gluon plasma is uh, rapid but very smooth crossovers. So there's no discontinuity here. On the other hand, uh, through many uh, model studies, so through uh, many model studies, uh, uh, you, one, one would uh, uh, inspect that the transition separating the QGP and, and the hydrogen gas is the first low transitions. So, yeah, so if you look at this line here, so this phase boundary is the first low transitions. Uh, if this is the case, is there's a well natural consequences, namely this first of the transition line should end at some point, and this end point by definition is called, uh, called the critical point. So this is the point, and uh, uh, this is the point where the distinction between the hydrons and the quark 
from plasma disappears. So um, obviously, this is the point oh, which. A, a question. A question. Yes. Uh, so, so yes. what, what, what are the key evidences for the first order phase transition between hydrogen gas um, and thermal plasma? And so, to be honest, yeah. Um, so, to be honest, I'm sorry. Maybe can you repeat the last sentence? I oh, can, yeah. what I ask is like, what is the what are the, the key indications, uh, theoretical indications of the presence of first order phase transition? Yeah, so that's a, yeah, so I think to be honest, so basically people doing some uh, uh, effective model, effective models such like NGL model or its variant and by such a model um, uh, calculations, one, um, uh, one general conclusion from those model uh, uh, calculation is there's a first order transitions. Uh, however, those calculations also give a variety of the location of the critical points. But uh, to be honest, those uh, effective models, to some extent, is some uncontrolled approximation of generating QCDs. So we don't have the first principle, uh, uh, I think the first principle knowledge about why there's a first order transition or not. We, uh, what we can say is, uh, uh, is quite, uh, uh, we, we just, uh, I think it's more or less like a still like a, a speculation based on the effective uh, series. And on the other hand, I should also mention is there's an, uh, some new development from a, a, a school of, um, uh, of scientists such as Golden Band. What they are trying to do is trying to use the neutron star data to constrain why is, it, uh, why is it the transition at a very low temperature is a, a first the transition or, or not. And uh, their claim is, if you go to extremely low temperature, the transition might also be a crossover. So in that sense, you can say that the critical point or the, uh, or the presence of the first transition is one of the main uh, unknowns about the structure of the uh, phase diagram of QCD. So does that answer your question? Yes, thanks. Yes. And so yes, indeed, I think I was, uh, um, uh, by answering, risk, uh, answering these questions, I think I almost, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, I believe it's very transparent that if indeed one can find the QCD critical point experimentally, or see the face, uh, or see the signature of the first transition experimentally, this would be a, a some, uh, this would be a milestone in the field, and also this would uh, uh, break the new, fr uh, new, uh, new, uh, new frontier. So I think this is very interesting questions, and this is a question for the futures. And so let me add a little bit about the how to search for the QCD critical point uh, experimentally. So uh, in short, what the people can do in heavy and collisions is by changing the colliding energies. So if you go to lower and the lower energies, for example, this is the 200 mgV, but if you go to lower, like uh, 39, 27, et cetera, you will go to regions with the uh, uh, with the higher barrier and chemical potentials. And this program is called the BMNG scan because by changing the BMNG, you are trying to scan uh, these uh, phase diagrams. So let me try to summarize the current uh, uh, status of the principal point. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Could you go back to the previous slide? Mm -hmm. Yes. So as you decrease the, the collision energy, the initial temperature, whenever that's well defined in the plasma, also goes down. So could it that's be, right. of course, the, the, the variant density goes up, but the temperature goes down. So could it be that by decreasing the energy in the collision, right. unfortunately, we are very unlucky, you actually miss the critical point because the starting point is too low, too, at too low temperature? And I think this is a large, uh, for example, uh, if I, so basically I want to, uh, understand what they are saying by joy, drawing this right mark here. So what they are saying is if the energy is so low, maybe the starting point of the evolution is somewhere here. Yes. And um, I think this is a logical, uh, uh, this is the possibilities. So I think the answer to, uh, to this question is twofold. I think the first thing is, 
the study uh, at very lower energy is uh, interesting of its own right in the sense that we could also measure the nuclear equation state uh, in these regions. Uh, on the other hand, the point is if you are really do the, uh, do you, if you are really scanning the beam energies, even though maybe in several colliding energies you missed the critical point, but by the argument of continuity, we still could uh, see, uh, see the hints of the presence of the critical point. So that's, uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, to some extent, I guess what I'm worried about is that if you, so I could draw a curve on this diagram, which would correspond to the initial temperature and let's say chemical right. potential or density of the initial time in the collision. And if that curve goes down too quickly, right. you will miss both the critical point and the line of first of the phase transitions, right? That's true, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, but you see, by the argument of the continuity, we know some events is above the, uh, I mean, the phase boundary. And if you uh, keep changing the beam energies, even if uh, you have some blue points here, blue points here, uh, by also looking, if you combine the data from the other collecting energies, you could still infer the knowledge of the presence of the critical point. Provided the two curves cross each other, right? Uh, Provided the curve of phase transitions crosses the curve of the blue dots. Yes, but I think the point is if you do some measurement at this one above the phase boundary and you do some measurement below the phase boundaries, even though you, can direct, you cannot directly measure the, uh, do the uh, even though you miss the critical point or miss the first transitions, uh, if but if you're comparing the data from here, um, uh, data from um, um, just one second, yes, I have to go over. Uh, so uh, yeah, so what I'm saying is that I uh, suppose you have two uh, points here. And yes, you miss the phase transitions, but if you compare data here and the compare data here, if you see some qualitative differences, then what the people might do is maybe you can add a, one additional collisions in between. That's the one method. And another method is uh, maybe people could try to upgrade the rapidity acceptance because if you go to the large rapidity, you actually also changes the beam energy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I think it would be nice is actually we can see two, uh, two colliding energies where the data show some qualitatively differences. Even if those two colliding energies miss the critical point, this is, I, think, uh, I still think this is very exciting news. Okay, so let me try to actually um, um, uh, try to summarize the uh, experimental status. And so Barry, I think following up the previous discussions, it was pointed out the goal of searching for the uh, critical, uh, the way to search for the critical point is not uh, just uh, do a, uh, just uh, looking at one particular colliding energy. What one typical doing is just uh, um, colliding data, uh, so do some measurements for the different uh, colliding energies and see the trends of, as a function of the beam energies. So, uh, so what I uh, plot here, so data point here, a uh, very this data point is uh, from a long weighted data by the staff uh, collaborations. So this is just uh, submitted, uh, I think, to the archive a few, uh, few months ago. So what I plot here is the uh, uh, first cumulants of the proton multiplicity fluctuations. So what the, uh, uh, the cumulants maybe is, uh, sounds like a technical, uh, some, some, something very technical, but what this really measures is, uh, imagine you have some distribution functions at the, the zeros all is a Gaussian, but uh, if you subtract the Gaussian, there must be some tails. And uh, this cumulants, uh, this first cumulants is a measure of the tail of the distributions. So uh, it turns out that uh, if you are crossing to the critical point, uh, these Gaussian fluctuations, these non-Gaussian fluctuations will um, be uh, enhanced. And uh, moreover, the theory, the prediction is, if you compile the data with the um, baseline, and if you are approaching the critical point, the trends you will see is the um, the uh, those the, the non-Gaussian these false cumulants will first below the baseline and then jumps up. And this prediction uh, and uh, the data exactly 
uh, is in line from, um, from the theory of expectation and this is the data from the, uh, the first phase of the premium energy scans. Uh, I want to make a, a, a comment uh, uh, here is, uh, so, uh, is, of course, this is something uh, people are uh, very exciting, but at the same time, I want to also draw attention to this, uh, uh, this very uh, huge uh, error bus because there's not enough statistics so that we cannot, uh, we can, uh, so this is definitely, uh, those data are just uh, suggestive, but uh, we cannot uh, uh, pinpoint uh, uh, or even give a very definite answer about the presence of the um, um, critical point. So this comes to the uh, um, uh, good news. In, um, so this is just one uh, uh, event in the second phase of the BMNG uh, scam program. So this program happens last year and will continue. Um, uh, uh, so originally, I think the plan is to continue until the next year, but may, but of course, due to the uh, for the obvious reasons, uh, this program was stopped uh, for the last few months. So whether uh, whether the whole program will um, end the next year or not, we uh, we should wait to see. But uh, what is nice is this will. And so in these programs, so what the people will do is do very precision measurement in these regions that we see uh, some hints of the criticalities. So in short, high precision data is uh, coming. So uh, the question then, the, the question uh, as a series, the question one should ask is, <clears throat> what should we do? How should we extract the information about the crit uh, criticalities in such beautiful uh, data? So, uh, so now let me, uh, so in this slide, I want to uh, um, do some warm up exercises and then remind you uh, what, what uh, the year, yeah, what, uh, which physical quantities are very uh, sensitive to the um, criticalities. So, uh, so let me uh, here uh, using the uh, delta M to denote the fluctuation of the other parameter fields. And now let us uh, consider the, the two-point function of this other parameter field, and we do the Fourier transform. So Q here denotes the Fourier, uh, uh, Fourier uh, the Fourier modes, and uh, and if the system is in equilibrium brain, this two-point function is of the following form. So if you, uh, what does that mean is if you send the Q equals to zero, so this uh, uh, this two-point function, which is a measure of fluctuations, grows as uh, Precise square here, precise the correlationness will approach the infinity near the uh, critical point. On the other hand, if Q becomes much larger than the inverse of the correlation lens, uh, these two point functions will force, uh, for, uh, force out as a power loss. So, so that what does that mean is the fluctuation uh, is will be enhanced for the very small Q modes as up to as well as for the modes. Uh, which is order of one over size. And indeed, this is the physical origin of the phenomenon of the critical obsolescence. So now turning to the QCD critical um, point, if you um, uh, work a little bit uh, harder, you could demonstrate that the growth or the growth of this two-point function as well as its uh, non-trivial dependence on the correlation lens will lead to the growth of the non-Gaussian uh, fluctuations uh, which I have um, uh, of the proton numbers. So this is the observable that uh, has been shown in the previous uh, uh, slides. Also, uh, because of, the, of this particular scaling behavior of the two-point functions, we also obtain the critical scaling behavior of the equation states. So, um, but so far what I've been talking about is the, uh, the equilibrium uh, physics. But in reality, in heavy collisions, the real-time critical fluctuations uh, are very important, and this is uh, explained in these slides. So let, me, let us imagine we have a hypothetical critical point here, and we follow a trajectory, uh, a trajectory of a fireball created in heavy collisions. Uh, as this fireball uh, uh, is becoming closer and closer to the critical point, the fluctuation will grow. On the other hand, there's a very important phenomenon which uh, is called the critical slowing down. But that, what does that mean is the equilibration rate of the, uh, 
critical fluctuations will also become smaller and smaller. So what does that mean is eventually at some point close to the critical point, say this star, this star point in the, and here, the fluctuations will eventually fall out of uh, equine brains. So in the past few years, we are really trying to translate this intuitive uh, expectations into, uh, into the equations and uh, into the uh, solutions. So it, uh, uh, so it uh, turns out that actually the off equilibrium or the real time critical fluctuations can be different from equilibrium expectations, which, uh, which, is quanti which is not only at the quantitative levels, but also at the uh, qualitative levels. First of all, this is not end of the stories. Because in principle, those all frequent effects of the back uh, reacts on the bulk evolutions. Why? And the uh, simple the answer is uh, is uh, uh, is behind this very simple equations, namely the gradient of pressures will give the acceleration of the flow. But on the other hand, the uh, the scaling behavior of the equation state near the critical point is due to the fluctuations of the other parameter field. If such fluctuation is out of equilibrium brain, this pressure or this pressure which has also to be modified, which in turn changes the way that uh, the fireball expands. So this leads to uh, this, so this brings us to a very important question, namely how to describe the interplay among the fluctuations of the and the bulk evolutions. So um, I should add here is traditionally one, um, one, what one might think is doing the stochastic hydros in which you just uh, uh, add some noise tends to the hydrodynamic equations. But uh, there are some, uh, but uh, at least uh, there are two uh, sorts of the challenges. First one is the practical one, namely how to implement the stochastic, uh, solving the stochastic uh, equations in the expanding uh, system. Second one is actually is a, a very uh, conceptual, uh, is conceptual, namely the fluctuating hydrodynamics itself is not, uh, is UV divergent. And if you're trying to do the naive simulations, your result actually will depend on the lattice spacing of the uh, simulations. So uh, in order to address this, um, so in order to address those uh, challenges with the uh, um, uh, uh, what I will do uh, with my club, uh, what I'll do is trying to formulate a, a hydro-like series in which you are still solving the determinist, uh, determinist hydro-like equations, but uh, in order to take into account the long wavelength fluctuations, what we are trying to find a way to couple those long wavelength fluctuations directly to the hydrodynamical uh, uh, of, uh, the hydrodynamical fields or hydrodynamical modes. So I will, uh, in the following slides, I will explain the formulation of this uh, new theory, which we will call it the Hydro Plus. And also I will show you some uh, simulation results because our ultimate goal is apply this new set of equations to model the bulk dynamics near the critical point. So uh, any questions at this moment? Okay, yes. I would, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. You are trying to have some effective description in the region around the critical point, is that correct? Yes. And this region, let's say, you make some kind of uh, region around the critical point, uh, the first order line will go through this region. So do you expect some discontinuity mm -hmm. if, if you cross this line? Is yeah, I think that's where we... Uh, I think that's uh, yeah. I think that's a very good point. I think I want to be clear is um, uh, it turns out that the theory that we develop could describe the, the dynamics if we approach the critical point from the crossover side. And and uh, for the first order transition, this is still an uh, open question because there are other ingredients such as spin nodal decomposition, etc. And uh, we have not yet. Uh, 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 so far, we cannot address this uh, first of the transition side of the stories, and uh, and also um, we are not aware of some uh, established framework which can be directly applied to the heavy on collision systems. Does this answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, but actually what is interesting is sometimes it's always useful is to really uh, consider some uh, more general questions than uh, something more general, namely, imagine in some physical situations, I have a very slow mode, some slow but non-conserved modes. How can I couple this uh, slow modes with the hydro, uh, uh, to the hydrodynamic modes? So I will first explain how to do this. Uh, the purpose, there's a two, uh, the reason is twofold. First is, this is like the warm-up, uh, warm uh, Warm up exercises before we are trying to couple the long wavelength fluctuations to the hydro mode. And the second reason is because there are many physical situations, indeed, there's a presence of the parametric slow mode, so that the, uh, so that the framework that we get from these exercises might uh, have a very broad uh, applications. And I don't think I need to um, tell you more about the hydrodynamics. So just to remind you that uh, if you think about hydro as a low energy effective theory, the degree freedoms are the conserved densities. And also the uh, such as the energy density denoted by E and the momentum densities which are related to the flow of velocities. So what you should do next is to just solving the conservation laws. You need to input the equation state as well as the transport the um, coefficients and the, uh, and the hydrodynamics has a very broad uh, applications in astrophysics, in heavy applications, and also try to describe the uh, quantum fluid. So, um, so I, I should mention that uh, the coupling the hydro modes with non hydro mode is not something very, uh, um, uh, very new. Uh, in contrast, it has very uh, long tradition and, and no history. Uh, one one well for me, an example is the Israel Stewart series. So you put the, you, you you introduce some additional tensor modes and uh, using a relaxation time to describe its evolutions and uh, this. Uh, uh, and also, I should mention that Miko and his collaborators also trying to couple in the hydrodynamic modes with the quasi normal modes. This is in particular motivated by the. Uh, whole lot, uh, gauge gravity uh, correspondence. Also, uh, also just a reminder for the quantum link. We to if uh, more often than not, you need to also couple some uh, conservative densities with other uh, non hydrodynamical degree for freedoms. I want to just mention or draw your attention to a, 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 to a recent very nice work by Dam Swan, which he essentially tried to introduce some quantum mechanical version of uh, pi mu mu in the Israel Stewart uh, series to describe the uh, quantum horror uh, states. But uh, I think in this talk, I will talk about a special class of the non hydrodynamic modes, which I will call them the um, parametrically slow mode. So this is just a remark on the notations. So in this part of the discussion, I will use phi to denote a generic non-hydrodynamic but uh, mm, slow mode. But in fact, this can be one mode and this can also be a uh, representative of many, many modes. So what do I mean by the um, parametrically uh, slow modes? So, uh, so the, idea, the, uh, the idea here is for the hydrodynamics mode, their relaxation rate vanishes in a small uh, gradient, uh, in a small gradient uh, limit. But for the non conserved densities, if you take uh, Q goes to zero to limit or gradient to zero limit, uh, those, uh, those non conserved modes, such as the fine mode, does not have, to, it cannot be zeros. But on the other hand, our claim, uh, our, uh, our uh, hypothesis is uh, for some physical reasons in the system of the interest, there's another small, there's a, another small. Uh, parameters such that if you send these small parameters to zeros, then the relaxation rate of this fine mode all becomes parametrically small than the typical micro uh, microscopic scales. And this defies the parametrically uh, slow modes. The uh, primary examples in this talk is the fluctuation near the critical point because we know from the uh, critical slowing down when, uh, when, the, when the system is uh, close to the critical point, the equilibration rate of the fluctuations we are vanishes. So in these cases, the additional swirl parameter is just the inverse of the correlation length 
and the fine modes, uh, those slow, the parametrically slow modes are those, uh, those critical fluctuations. And there are also other examples. For example, if you consider the axial charge uh, in, the, in the weakly coupled coagulant plasmas, its relaxation rate is uh, suppressed by alpha s to the power of six, makes it, make it much smaller as compared with the micro, typical microscopic uh, 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 relaxation rate in the, uh, in the weakly coupled settings. So, uh, so in other words, the axial charge density, you can consider axial charge density as another example of the parametrically slow mode. So any questions about these uh, definitions? I think this is very important in the constructions, in the uh, construction of the hydroplast, et cetera. Yeah, hi. Um, okay. I, have one, I have one question. Um, so well, it's more general than just the definition of the um, parametrically slowness. But um, it's more about the finite size of the of the plasma that is produced in the experiments. That you know most of the, the critical phenomena and the approaches, the effective approaches, assume essentially that you have an infinite system. But um, mm -hmm. you think right. you can take into account the finite size effects in in, in these? Um, well, maybe they will even affect these definitions. So I'm not sure. Um, uh, for the finite size, I think that's a very uh, uh, good question. But uh, um, we need to think about it, but uh, I think the point is near the critical point, the gamma, for example, for the, in particular for the uh, QCD critical point, the, uh, the gamma vanishes as a cosine to the, to the minus three, whether the, and, which means that the finite time, the slowness of the fluctuation is more important than the finite, uh, than the finite size effect. And for that reason, we focus on, uh, and the finite time effect, but um, I'm I'm not sure it's the parametric slow mode. Whether one can uh, using this generalize this idea to describe the finite size effect. This I'm not sure, but I think this is very interesting. In particular, if you think about the small systems in the highway and collisions. Yeah, but thank you so much for this question. Thank you. Uh, anything? I, uh, yeah, uh, can you? Please uh, explain once more the this uh, limiting processes, which is written in the second uh, line of your equations. Two limiting process. I mean, the physically right. the meaning of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So physically, uh, if you send the gradient to zero, uh, the hydro the relaxation rate of the hydro mode will vanish, and the physical meaning is just the conservation law. But on the other hand, because the uh, Non-conserved densities in general does not constrained by the conservation law, so that uh, its equilibration rate should remain finite. Um, however, in the physics of uh, in many physical situations, there are some additional parameters, which if that parameter is zero, then some of the degrees rate, the equilibration rate of uh, of that uh, uh, mouse becomes very small. And, and, and so, so the point that is, in addition to small gradient, there could uh, uh, exist some small parameters which controls the slowness of the relaxation. Okay. Does this answer your question? Yeah, and, and uh, I, mean, I mean, what is this small parameter is supposed to be in, in the, I mean, in the, for any, uh, any yeah, physical yeah. exam? Yeah. And so, yeah, so this depends on the context. If we are okay. talking about the uh, fluctuations, then the parameters is the inverse of the correlation lens because, for example, gamma scales with psi to some powers, inverse of the powers, if psi goes to zero, meaning you are infinitely close to the critical point, then the equilibration rate of the fluctuations will vanish. Okay. And this is one example. And in the axial charge density examples, if you consider the ratio between the axial charge density and the microscopic scales, and the send the alpha s to zero, you found that uh, the axial charge density is infinitely slower as compared with other microscopic degree freedoms. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, uh, so then let me uh, just uh, be, um, um, be uh, brief in about this slide, which is, let us just imagine a situation that this additional parameter becomes very, uh, becomes very small and, uh, and, and uh, 
and I think it uh, becomes very small. And what does that mean is there's a window between the equilibrium between the equilibrium rate of the slow mode and uh, the equilibrium rate of the microscopic modes, in which that you cannot simply uh, apply the hydrodynamics because in these regions you should treat uh, treat these additional slow modes as the uh, independent degree uh, degree freedoms. Or in other words, I will call this blue uh, red region as the hydroplast region, and this region would become very important when the time scale of the interest is comparable to the equilibration of the uh, slow mode. And so, so now I want to talk about the physical implication of the, the presence of this region, this uh, uh, hydroplast regions. So the first thing that we, uh, we should keep in mind is in these regions, uh, to characterize, uh, to characterize, um, if you, you wish to characterize a macroscopic state, you need not only the energy density, but also the value of these additional slow modes. So it's quite the nature that what one should do is introduce the concept of the generalized entropy, which, uh, which I denoted by entropy plus here, which depends on not only energy density, but the phi. So for, for simplicity, I just assume and the system is very neutral. And also you can define what the, this entropy as the log of the number of the micros, uh, microscopic states with the given energy density, uh, with given energy density and the expected value of the slow modes. Uh, we can impose in the first constraints based on the second law of thermodynamics, namely the entropy plus should be always smaller than the entropy uh, uh, than, the, uh, uh, than the conventional entropies. And also you, uh, you can see that the equal side will be achieved if the phi mode is equilibrated. Uh, I will give you all the examples in which actually this generalized entropy can also be determined from some microscopic uh, uh, considerations. Uh, another thing I want to mention here is we, um, we can also introduce other generalized thermodynamical functions such as the generalized uh, uh, temperatures, the beta plus, as well as the generalized uh, pressure uh, and denoted by the pressure and plus fields. So, so I, have a uh, I have a question about uh, the previous slide here, this slide. Uh, so, so, so normally uh, when you talk about thermodynamic quantities, right, uh, you, you use the properties of equilibrium, right, and, uh, and these are the right. quantities that are, uh, say, conserved, right, or you keep right. fixed. Um, right. And like if you have, say, isolated system, right, energy is fixed because it cannot really, you know, uh, go away, right? But over here, sort of, we're saying that because the dynamics of the slow degrees of freedom is uh, so slow, uh, they give rise to something like an effective charge for, for these variables. This is what you're trying to say. And then there's going to be something that is not really like equilibrium, but some sort of like a glassy equilibrium in which with, with eventually you know, it decays. But uh, over a duration of time, it's going to be characterized by some effective charge phi. Isn't what right. you say? Yeah, exactly. I think if you think about some axial charge, we know axial charge will eventually die, but we could still introduce some, some dynamical function as a function of energy density and axial charge, for example. Exactly, yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah so I think that this is one distinction from the uh, hydroplast and the usual israel stupid theory because people uh, added the Israel, uh, the pi mu mu in the israel stupid series, but uh, people actually don't uh, introduce the non-trivial generalized equation state for, for the pi mu mu. But uh, in principle, as a, a, actually I will give you an example in which indeed, uh, indeed you can have a non-trivial generalized thermodynamical functions. In, in Israel Stewart, uh, j just to jump on it, like the, there is a relaxation time, and like what you're not supposed to do is to take this uh, relaxation time to be uh, too short, right? Because that uh, violates causality in this theory. But uh, you can make it arbitrarily long, right? Uh, there is not uh, right. You can make a uh, tau pi arbitrarily small, yeah. But uh, uh, arbitrarily long, uh, you can make relaxation arbitrarily long, right? You cannot really make it. You cannot make it instantaneous, right? Because instantaneous limit is this Navier-Stokes limit. Uh, which is ill-defined, but you can make it very, 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 very long. So, so can you think about uh, the Israel Seor as some sort of a prototypical example of this hydroplast if you take the relaxation time to be very, very large? 
Uh, yeah, I think that this is the simple. Maybe you can think about Israel still world in the tau pi goes to uh, infinite. infinite limit, yeah. simply stabilization of hydro plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I want to also add uh, is even in the Israel, uh, another thing I'm saying Israel still world in this limit is the simple example is because uh, people don't, people just have a very trivial equation today, which is say, um, I think, yeah, so basically in general, you would imagine that the um, pressure should be a function of uh, energy density and the pi mu mu, if you really follow the logic of these constructions. But I think people just use a very trivial uh, functional form for the energy density and the pi mu mu. I think that's another, I think this is something I wish to call, call the, call, for the ten attention of the community. I think uh, in some cases, this equation state is also very important. Okay, okay, I see. Yes. Uh, so another thing I think some physical consequences is, if you imagine you have a parametrically slow mode, what does that mean is if you consider the transport coefficient the generically, uh, uh, some generic transport coefficients, you will see that the, this transport coefficient to the proportional uh, to the inverse of the relaxation rate of the slow mode. Just, uh, just to think about the Judah the approximation for conductivities. And so what does that mean is, if in the situations that you have a parametrically slow mode, you typically will have a very enhanced, very large uh, transport uh, uh, coefficients. So one example is the system near the critical point where the bulk viscosity uh, uh, where the bulk viscosity also grows with the correlation length to the uh, three times. And another interesting example is for the well semi-metals, the slow damping of axial charge densities will induce the enhanced uh, negative magnetic resistivities. And but what, uh, what is uh, uh, also I want to point out here is uh, if you are increasing the um, a frequency so that this frequency is comparable or even larger than the equilibration rate. There's a very fast drop on the, of the effective transport coefficient because when this additional slow mode is out of equilibrium, uh, out of equilibrium brings, there's no, there's a less dissipative effect so that the uh, effective transport coefficient will drop uh, significantly. And so far, this is something I think is uh, very uh, general. So now let us try to write down the um, uh, equations. So, um, so let us first talk about the equations for the uh, slow modes. We are here, we assume this slow mode is, uh, uh, is a scalars. So the left hand side is uh, standard and the right hand side symbolically, you can have the two terms. And the first term denotes the response because they know the first term here proportional to the uh, compression and the expansion rate and this uh, and, and, and you can think about this uh, uh, this term is due to the uh, expansion of the fluid but in also you could have uh, another term which is the uh, returning force terms uh, denoted by uh, f5 here so, so uh, in general f5 is a function of energy density and uh, is slow mode so that uh, so the energy density is coupled to the slow mode. Uh, on the other hand, you also have still have the conservation loss, which is shown here. But what uh, now becomes non-trivial is this T mu mu. We are not only depends on the energy density, but also depends on this additional slow mode. So as a net result, you have the coupled uh, uh, equations. So, so, what, so what, 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 what goes wrong if you don't modify your uh, your entropy, your definition of entropy. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, because you, you're, you're not supposed to use the thermodynamic definition of entropy, but you, you're supposed right. to modify it uh, right. with the dependence on phi. So, so yeah. you're, you're saying that like, you cannot really make these equations leading to non-negative divergence of, of regular entropy. You can make it into non-negative divergence of something else, some, some right. modified entropy, this is what you're saying. Uh, I think that the physical reason is just because if some degree freedoms are out of equilibrium, you essentially generate a less entropies. And in that sense, if you use the equilibrium entropy, at least you miss the contribution due to the dissipation or non-dissipation of these additional modes. I see, I see, I see. 
Uh, but of course, the physical depends on the physics of the entrance. This correction can be tiny. This is possible, but uh, just as a matter of, uh, I think, just a matter of principle, you should, uh, in principle, uh, modify uh, the equation state as well as the effective transport coefficients. And 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 shall um, I shall I regard uh, well the, the, the equation the, the this equation of motion for phi is is supposed to be at this level general in the sense that uh, it's supposed to be dissipative in principle. Yes, so I think so far it's a little bit formal because uh, in the general and the point that is so the next question real physical question is uh, how do you determine t mu mu uh, uh, or how do you generalize the constitutive relations. So there are two approaches that you can um, do. One is just uh, generalize the idea of the constituted relation, because uh, so now uh, now in uh, in the uh, now we have two small parameters. One is the gradient shown here. The other is the small parameter which controls the smallness of the uh, additional modes. And um, and uh, actually in these references. Uh, in the context of the magnetohydrodynamics coupled with the axial charge density, we give a, a explicit example that how to, by doing the double expansion in these two parameters, you could determine uh, both this restoring force and, uh, and uh, the uh, constituting relations to the noise non trivial order of those both small parameters. And uh, to do that, actually, you need to use the correct generalized entropy because this uh, generalized the second law of thermodynamics uh, plays a very important constraint on the constituted relation of this series just as in the usual hydrodynamics. Yes, so, so this is uh, something so general. So, um, so uh, maybe uh, Miko, can you just give me some guidance about the, uh, what is the uh, rule of the timing for this seminar? Um, well, it probably shouldn't uh, run the official part for too long. Uh, so in principle, we, we have like still uh, 10 minutes to go. Um, mm -hmm. okay. I, I suggest you keep going and if you can uh, finish like the, the main part in about 15 minutes, that would be okay. And if somebody is interested yeah. in listening like this, this additional part about non-hydro non stuff, which certainly I am, uh, then we're going to stop yeah. the recording and you, you, you keep going, okay? Yes, that's great. I think so. Then I think I will try to uh, talk about this part maybe within the next 15 minutes. And uh, I really wish to continue. After that, I wish to continue with you and others about uh, some non hydrodynamics. Is that okay? Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Okay. So I think actually I'm already ready to extend the, our previous general uh, discussions to the cases of the uh, uh, critical point dynamics. As I just said, um, um, there are two ways to determine the constituted relations in this new theory. One is just to write down the general expansion in terms of the small parameter, the small gradient, and the small uh, and another parameter control the slowness of the, um, the slowness of these normals. And another way is uh, suppose you know very good knowledge about uh, the what this snow mode is, you can actually try to uh, constrain the structures of the constituent uh, 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 relation to a very large extent. So here, let me try to just uh, uh, remind uh, my you that our goal is to describe the long wavelength fluctuations of the other parameter field. So, um, so mathematically, um, mathematically uh, what you can do is you define the weak large transform with respect to the two point function of the other parameter field. And that I am here. So the Q here is the conjug is conjugate variables to the relative position between the and two field. As a result, here this finals depends on space, depends on time, but also depends on the resolution scales. So in other words, in these cases, we not only have one mode, we have a towers of modes which is labeled by this and Q variables. So physically, what does that mean? Is this a, Two-point function is a measure of the width of the distribution of the uh, fluctuating um, per other parameter field at some um, particular uh, uh, particular wave, um, wave number, say Q here. 
So in the series, we just propose the following relaxation time uh, equations for, for the evolution of this um, um, fine modes. And the, the, um, but the, what is nice is actually this uh, relaxation rate in the vicinity of the critical point can be, can, uh, can be uh, you can just input these uh, functions from the universe uh, based on the dynamical, universe, uh, with, um, dynamical universalities. So now let me try to talk a little bit about the generalized entropy. So uh, S plus, so I'll go here is, uh, so here what I am um, writing down here is the difference between the entropy plus and the equilibrium entropy and express this as a functional of the uh, slow modes. So, so what is nice is actually one can, um, if you work a little bit harder, you can actually derive this functional dependence. So let me try to just uh, uh, interpret a little bit. So recall five, interpretation is the width of the uh, fluctuations, which means that if you change the width, you could, uh, you, if you increase the width, meaning you can accommodate more and more uh, fluctuation degree freedoms, and just and so that you get a log of phi, which so that you get entropy, which is proportional to the log of phi. Uh, you need uh, you need these two terms because this guarantees that the resulting uh, uh, generalized entropy uh, is uh, um, uh, its second derivative is uh, uh, is negative. Uh, so this is for the um, uh, stability uh, the issue of the stabilities. So now we can return to the hydrodynamic equations. So if you have the generalized entropy, you can also determine generalized pressure. And uh, what one need to do here is you need to uh, replace the usual pressure in the places, in the place, uh, usual pressure in the uh, constituent relation of the, uh, high, uh, of the TMU with the uh, usual pressure with the generalized pressure to another pressure. Uh, plus, and by doing so, you couple this additional, you couple the non wavelength fluctuations with the um, uh, hydrodynamical evolutions. So I will skip these uh, um, uh, slides and just uh, mentioning that eventually in this series, what we want to capture is uh, we want to imagine expanding systems. There's a fluctuation, but the fluctuation is falling behind because of the off equilibrium. Uh, on the hand, be, um, on the other hand, because the system is out of equilibrium, equilibrium uh, equation of state changes, and uh, this in turn changes the hydrodynamic force, which is acting on the hydrodynamic flow. Finally, because you have non-trivial hydrodynamic flow, you will also transport the uh, fluctuations. So, uh, so as I said, the ultimate goal of uh, Hydro Plus is to use this to, uh, as a quantitative tool to study the dynamics near the QCD critical point. But before doing that, we wish to first do some parallel uh, program to do some exercises by first simulating this, uh, uh, this simulating these equations in a simplified setups. So uh, I will give, uh, um, so I will talk about one ex recent example here, where I will assume the system is the boosting variant and the transversely uh, uh, symmetric. And uh, also we just put a hypocytic critical point near um, mu equals zero. The purpose of doing so is we want to just uh, ignore the equations for the variant uh, densities and to simplify the numerical code, uh, uh, numerical cost. But our goal eventually is to showcase the intervening dynamics between the fluctuations and the, the uh, flow. So this is just the uh, temperature profile in our simulations. So this is the boundary for the temperature around 180, and this is uh, for the uh, 140. And uh, some growth of the correlations happens between these bands, and we will focus on, um, on these bands. Uh, so, um, so, so here I will, uh, so, um, so in this, uh, so in these figures, what we show is the, um, uh, show is if we pick up some fixed radius, because we are uh, considering a, 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 a really a, a fireballs, which, so that our energy density and the FIMOS will become, will depends on the radius and also depends on the, uh, and the wave numbers. So we pick up some fixed radius, and uh, we plot this uh, low wavelength fluctuations as a, 
uh, function of, uh, of Q. So I'm not going to talk about the details here, but uh, just uh, uh, remind you that the solid one is the real-time evolution, and the dashed one um, is the equilibrium expectations, and, the, and the, they are different due to the um, off equilibrium um, effects. But what is really interesting is, in fact, this off equilibrium effect has been studied in, uh, in the homogeneous variables. But when you do the simulations, we could also talking about uh, is the spatial distribution of the long wavelength fluctuations. And uh, I want to give you a representative example here. So here, what we do is we pick up a, a representative uh, wave numbers. We pick up a representative magnitude of the relaxation rate. And in the dashed curves, we show the uh, uh, we show the equilibrium values at the several uh, at several snapshot. So the right one is very early time, and uh, um, by the from right to green, we have uh, uh, is uh, uh, so blue one is an intermediate time, and green one is a little bit later time. What we can see is that the peak of the fluctuation is moving inward because in our models the center of the fiber is uh, hotter so that uh, the inner region reaches the critical point at a relatively later time. So what is interesting is if you look at those off equilibrium uh, fluctuations, we, we see two observations. The first is the peak value of the off equilibrium one is smaller than the equilibrium uh, expectation. This is the demonstration of the critical slowing down. On the other hand, we also see that those peaks are moving outward. And uh, what does that mean? What, uh, why the, uh, what the physical ori origin is you have a very strong radio flow, and uh, those radio flows actually carries away, um, actually carries away the, uh, the critical um, uh, fluctuations. So, so this really, uh, so I think what we learned from here is there's, uh, um, there's a very, um, intervene the dynamics between the evolution of the fluctuations in time as well as how they will be, pro how, how, as well as their propagations in the real um, fireballs. And the goal of Hydro Plus is to have a framework so that we can capture uh, those effects. So I will uh, skip uh, one slide and just come into the uh, discussion part. So I think the license uh, we learned here is that long trivial spatial distributions of fluctuations induced by the flow or induced by the direction. Uh, I can not show, I will not show, uh, I have not show you the slides, but uh, in the second bullet, I want to uh, tell you all this access tells us that actually the critical fluctuation, the, the effects of the critical fluctuation on the, uh, and the thermodynamic function is very weak. And the one way to uh, understand it is uh, comparing the equilibrium attribute with the phase space volume of the non wavelength fluctuations. And if you plug in numbers, the typical magnitude is around the 10 to the minus three. Uh, so I think that there's a even more general license that one could learn is, uh, uh, as a uh, is, uh, to determine a non-hydrodynamic model, whether it's important or not, there's two criteria. One is whether it's slow or not, but I think there's another criteria, which is how is, is coupling between the hydro mode, is the coupling between the hydro mode and this mode itself. And let me just quickly uh, summarize uh, the progress that the people have been made in the past year on the beam exchange physics and the physics of the search for the QCD critical one and uh, on the exploration of the uh, QCD phase diagram and the QCD in the very, uh, in the baryon, um, in the, in the, in the baryon rich regions. So the short summary is, this is very rich uh, program. We made the progress on the initial stages on the hydro evolution and also on the hydro dy hydron dynamics uh, and after hydrodynamical uh, stages. So in fact, within the best uh, collaborations, we are preparing a very long uh, papers wrapping up what we learned in the last five years. And the name is the Toolkit uh, two User Manual for the QCD uh, Critical Port, uh, for the QCD Critical Port Search. So this is our, uh, this is the, the our tentative uh, titles and uh, uh, hopefully this will be put out at the end of this uh, 
Uh, here, so in summary, is the, the quantitative uh, quantitative error on the study of the BES physics. I think, uh, in, in particular, on the search for the QCD critical point has just uh, begun because in the uh, five years before, I don't think we have the quantitative tools, but now we are uh, we almost have the tools ready. And definitely there are future challenges such as the dynamics of the non-Gaussian fluctuations and also uh, the question of about the uh, first order transitions. Uh, all of them are very interesting and contains the uh, uh, rich physics. Um, so I think before uh, coming to the uh, summary, I will just uh, briefly mention the uh, question uh, I want to ask, but I will not give you the answer. Uh, of course, if you wish to continue, you can uh, stay. And uh, so basically the question uh, about uh, here is, we know that uh, if you try to disturb the quark brown plasmas by some finite frequency and uh, the uh, wave numbers, so at a very small frequency of wave numbers, you will excite the hydrodynamics modes. And also because of the asymptotic freedoms, in the infinite large frequency of K or, or infinite omega and K limit, you will get quasar particles. But the, the real question is what happens um, in between? What are we uh, in between? Uh, I think there are very good many uh, good reasons to believe that there is a region in which the theory is not described by hydrodynamics. However, uh, we are, uh, however, the system is still strongly coupled. So I will refer to this region as the non-hydrodynamic yet strongly coupled region of the QGPs. I think we know uh, and we expect, at least I expect the existence of these regions, but our knowledge about about it is very uh, limited. So uh, with this, let me uh, come to the um, summary. So, um, so in uh, so the, the main uh, the main part of my talk is talking about the development of the flat on um, the study of the fluctuating dynamics near the QCD critical point, and the theory that I was explained is hydroplast. But I want to emphasize that uh, this theory might face its uh, applications in a more broad context. And uh, as far as the critical point search is concerned, I think we we are just entered into the quantitative uh, quantitative era of this uh, uh, physics. Uh, as far as the non-hydro yet strongly coupled region of QGP is concerned, I think. Uh, uh, our knowledge is quite limited, but we are starting collecting new pieces and uh, hopefully eventually we can uh, bring all these pieces together and have a whole picture about this interesting yet least, uh, uh, yet not much explored region. Okay, thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Let's uh, unmute ourselves and give an ovation. Yeah, super. So uh, we have, uh, well, I mean, it's up to us to do whatever we want, but we have time for, for questions about the hydroplast part. So please go ahead if you have any. Yeah, I, I have a question, uh, David, yes. here. Yes. So I'm just trying to understand the main conclusion of your discussion. Mm -hmm. So you argued that the back reaction of the slow modes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that's right. The back reaction is small of the, of the slow modes on the on the hydro variables, right? But yet you cannot ignore those slow modes because they have an important effect on other observables like right. cumulants, etc. Is that the message? Yes, yes. So so it turns out is uh, if you if your goal is to do the phenomenology, I think that you can ignore the back reaction of the uh, slow mode, the long wavelength fluctuations, and the bulk evolution just because the phase space volume is too small. But on the other hand, because they are, those modes are directly related to the other fluctuations. So we need to, first of all, watch the uh, evolution of the snow modes. Second, we also need to understand how the flow, the, the effects of flow on those snow modes are very important. Yes, I think uh, you, yeah, I think uh, with the, uh, what you said is perfectly is perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So I think I, I want to just add. I think if you think about the 
language of the personal normal modes, I think the lessons I learned maybe uh, it, once you learn it, it's very obvious is not only the pole is important, but the residue is very important because you can freeze in the suppression of the back reaction as the statement that the residue of that pole or the or, or towers of poles is very small. Any, any more questions from the audience? Yeah, I have a, I have a question uh, from up here. So I, you, well, it's, it's about the experiment. So it's about the phenomenology of um, um, the experiment, actually. The, so you only mentioned the beam energy scan in ETRIC, but there are some, you know, other experiments planned for the future, which are specifically designed to um, explore the, the finite uh, baryon density regions, right? So Fair and Nika right. in, in particular. Do you think um, you are going to learn something qualitatively different from those experiments? I mean, I don't know what this actual status is, of course, because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. but um, um, yeah, can you comment on that? Um, so first of all, I think uh, this is very interesting. I think actually that's one of the motivation that I decided to uh, to move my move to my current uh, institution because uh, this institution we are also built a fixed study uh, program to uh, to study the first I mean to create a matters of will be around uh, 800 MeV. I think uh, Lika and uh, uh, CBM we are also do the uh, do the same. And so I think my understanding uh, actually. Um, uh, the, the one, one obvious reason is if you create something around uh, 800 MeV, you are much closer to the uh, neutral star, the physics of the uh, neutral star, I think, uh, which is uh, uh, interesting of uh, its own right. And the second thing is, uh, it could be that if you directly see the effects of a critical point, it's very hard. But if you are go to a large baryon chemical potential, and if in some experiment you can hit the first order transitions, maybe this is the ideal places to study the uh, phase structure, um, phase structure of the um, QCD. And uh, the third reason, which is more or less reflecting my personal taste, is I think we still not yet understand much about the, the nature of the carol symmetry restoration through the heavy ion collision program at the very top rig energy or at the FGC. Uh, correct me, I'm wrong, but that's my understanding. Uh, however, if you go to very, very large baryon um, chemical potentials, uh, so there are two things I think would happen here. One is you could create collisions which it, maybe more or less very close to the boundary where the carol symmetry restoration or carol symmetry broken happen. Second is, uh, you know that once you're uh, in, uh, at very lower beam energies, when the baryon density is finite, there could be some new phenomenon uh, emerges, which are very sensitive to the um, carol effects. And uh, uh, one example I think all of you are familiar with is if you have a new B, you can, also have some carol uh, and the carol water effect. The uh, the the axial charge then uh, axial charge current induced by the vorticity is also proportional to the mu b square, meaning that the baryon density would uh, coupled with the vorticity, for example, and that uh, and uh, and this might open a new window to understand the physics of the carol symmetry restorations. So, so that's my, I think that's my short uh, answer, but maybe we can continue the discussion. So number one, we are closer, at least more closer to the physics of a neutral star. And the second, as I just mentioned, is uh, we are maybe can directly access the first order transition. And the third, and which is related is, uh, this offers the new window to understand the physics of uh, carol symmetry restoration but at a finite baryon density. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. So, I, I mean, like I, there was just essentially, uh, uh, well, my point was essentially just going back to what David asked in the beginning, that um, right. suppose that, for example, you cannot really, um, you come too short, you cannot go go um, beyond the first, uh, first order lines, phase separation line. But um, in ETRIC, but it may be possible, for example, in, for example, HIAF or NICA or, or FAIR, 
that you, you would be able to to go past that point. I mean, I mean, so what my my it was more like a, a question whether you would um, there is there is any more chance to to get to the um, the critical point from those experiments rather than Rick. But I mean, I definitely understand, of course, your your motivation of studying um, the B B marriages can. Yes. Yeah, thanks for yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So myself, I, I also have a question. So so it's it's related to to phenol predictions of hydro plus. So so my question is, uh, so, well, it it probably builds or relates to to the question that David asked uh, earlier. So because this background is so small, so like what 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 would you, I mean. It, where would you see for for phenological predictions of of, of this of this framework? What's what features uh, the, of the soft observables you would you would be looking uh, for? Uh, I think uh, the um, I think as I mentioned uh, at the beginning is this uh, two point function itself is still the key of the uh, physics uh, related to the to the critical dynamics and uh, for example you can based on five for example uh, what we are working on now is to try to uh, translate the off frequent value of these two point functions into the correlation of the proton numbers which mm -hmm. we can measure in the experiments and uh, to make the connection between this to the higher cumulants you need a little bit more work but uh, at this moment, we might find some hints that uh, uh, with some knowledge of phi and some other inputs from the critical universality, we can also connect that to the higher cumulants. Okay, and you're saying that like the, for, for this hydro plus would be essential? Yeah, the essential, still this is essential to characterize the, um, characterize the fluctuations, the the cumulants, but I think originally people also anticipated is maybe the back reaction to the bulk evolution can also be important because we know that the uh, the pressure has some scaling behavior near the critical point. But uh, it turns out that uh, if you really think about the long wavelength fluctuations, they only live in a very very small phase space, so that they are a back reaction on. The bulk, uh, um, bulk bulk functions are in particular uh, in general can be small and in particular because for QGP you have NC square suppressions. And 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 one 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 last uh, question at least on my behalf. Uh, so um, I mean the way you you presented was was quite phenomenological, right? Like to to motivate the existence of phi and then equations of motion for phi. But is there uh, can, can you can you take some microscopic framework uh, like weakly coupled framework or holography and try to derive that sort of uh, effective description? Uh, actually, for this one, is not. I mean, the, um, sorry. Uh, I should be clear. Is for the two point function. Actually, uh, this one is the. Um, so this uh, expression you can actually derive starting from like a landau ginsberg type theory. Because we have very good uh, theoretical oh. knowledge about the physics near the critical point. Well, when I was what I was trying to say is that when you when you have like the effective equation of motion for phi, right? Like you that, mean the uh, you mean the general one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the one that yeah, <laughs> yeah like the one yeah. on top, right? Like you you have like this a and f, right? And at this mm -hmm. level, I think like you. You, you you can say some things about a and f but like mm -hmm. uh, you, you you need some other input to fix them right, uh, uh, right. That, like, so, in, some, in some limits like they they take some particular form right but in general i i mean, I would be surprised if you would be able to say much about them so 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 do you have an idea like if one can take something some some microscopic description and try to 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 see if 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 you can derive a and f Yes, yes. I think uh, there's uh, um, something, uh, for example, if you, uh, actually, uh, I think you can, suppose you, for example, if you're computing the T mu mu, T mu mu correlation functions, you could relate some of these parameters to the behavior of the T mu mu or maybe T mu mu, T mu mu correlation functions. 
because the phase the point is the either the Green's function or this side of equations should describe the same side of the physics. Okay. Uh, so in other words, this is some generalized notion of the Cooper formula. Okay, okay, okay. But that's a, that's okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, Okay. Right, and actually, in the critical, in the case of the critical point, we also did, a, uh, we we show a dam, uh, alternative derivation, uh, which is essentially uh, in the condensed matter uh, uh, context, people compute the Green's function, a uh, bulk Green's function near the critical point, and uh, and and by matching uh, the linearized uh, hydroplastic equation with that. Uh, uh, Green's functions, we also could uh, determine some of the inputs. Okay, super, thanks. But I think it's a, a more interesting question, maybe uh, motivated by this question is, so usually if you think about the Cooper formula, uh, what one does is to say, take a small Q or small omega limit. The real question, interesting question is if we take uh, this uh, uh, additional small parameter to zero limit, whether we can establish some useful couple formulas, which directly determine some of the inputs. And you don't, oh, it's so a question, my question. question for now. Yeah. Okay. Do, do we have like the last question for, for, for you before we stop recording? I have maybe a quick one. Sure. Uh, David again. Um, about again about the, the suppressed back reaction of the slow modes on the bulk modes. Did, did I understand correctly that you said it has something to do with NC squared or is it something else? Uh, which is square? NC. NC, yes, yes. There are several surprising. So basically, in, if you look to the same thing uh, for the condensed matter systems, the suppression, they're still. Uh, some suppression, but uh, the magnitude is uh, significantly uh, smaller. And uh, one, and uh, we check this one trivial reason is just because the entropy has uh, uh, has some NC squared um, uh, dependence. But this is what and I'm also you have some flavor degree freedoms. Yeah. Ah, right. Okay. Because I was puzzled because NC squared uh, in QCD is a factor would give you a factor of ten. Right. Uh, whereas yeah. you think the suppression is 10 to the minus 3 or 10 to the minus 4, which is much, much bigger, a much bigger suppression. Yeah, yeah okay. So I think, I think there are some uh, other things I didn't make it uh, uh, very uh, clear is, uh, so, um, so if you are infinitely close to the critical point, or if you take the correlation lens to infinity first, so in, uh, then actually back reaction actually is very important because there's a prefactor which also grows with the correlation uh, lens. However, uh, however, in the heavy ion collisions, there's no hope that you are infinitely close to the critical point. Maybe the, the correlation lens just the change by factor of two or factor of three as compared with their microscopic values. And in these cases, the NC square suppression is very, very important. But doesn't this proximity to the critical point in a real heavy ion collision depend, you know, on the exact trajectory in the phase diagram right. and the exact location of the critical point? So couldn't it happen that for some particular collision energy, you actually come so close that you cannot ignore this bad reaction? Uh, there could be, and um, but basically, I think that in general, because uh, you know the beam energy scan is very, it's not very refined scan. Right. I mean of the phase diagram. So in some lucky scenario, maybe you are infinitely close to the QCD critical point, but I, mm, but generically, I wouldn't imagine this would happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank but I mean, anyway, if it happens, it's a good thing. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. So thank you. Uh, I'm gonna, thank you. 